Okay. Uh, so, uh, how do technology invention happen? Let's let's talk about this. So, the, the reading list is uh, a little bit in, uh, a little bit long. Uh, there are two videos, two articles from the web, the genius of the thinker, long notes of innovation, and then two videos. One is like five minutes, and the other one is a little bit longer. So uh, make sure you go through this. Now, we talked about definitions. Technology, process in which an organization transforms labor, capital, material, information into products and services of greater value. So this is the first definition. The second one was performance. Performance is how much value you get out of a product for you have paid some cost. And as we see, all of these things are always changing. The, the TVs are getting thinner, they're getting bigger, they're getting cheaper. Um, so innovation, that's a change in technology. And we're going to talk about innovation today. Um, so how does innovation happen? And the conventional thinking and the idea that many people have is that at least how innovation used to happen in the past was that there were some brilliant scientists working in the lab. And then, boom, one day they had this light bulb moment or epiphany or something. And then they, with this great idea, and there is this notion that ideas come like this when actually they don't. There are some examples of this. Nikola, Nikola Tesla, you know, you heard of this guy. He invented probably everything. Now, this is a Serbian. He comes from Serbia, emigrated to America in 1884 uh, when he was in his 20s. And he had with him a recommendation letter to Thomas Edison. He went to work for Thomas Edison. And he invented a lot of things, like alternative AC motors, uh, radio, radar, x-rays, uh, vacuum tubes, remote controls, wireless systems. So, so he invented a lot. And he, he was a very eccentric, uh, with lots of phobias, lived in hotel rooms all his life. And he would only stay in rooms that had numbers div divisible by three. You know, talk about an eccentric guy. But he cranked down a lot of in innovations and he got patents, sold the patents and that's how he could fund his research. Now he is doing research in his labs um, when the electricity is coming. And Now there's another one, another gentleman that was uh, sort of uh, synonymous with uh, in, in the word inventor and that is Thomas Edison. Uh, the great American inventor. He invented the phonograph, motion picture camera, uh, the light bulb, and he was one of the guys that invented the light bulb. He was not the only one, but he invented the one that was, that lasted the longest. The trick was not to get the light, the trick was to get the light to last at least through the day. I mean, it, it, it would only last for a few minutes, and that's no good. He used to work for Western Union, and he set up the first industrial lab in Melno Park. That's a city in New Jersey. Uh, and uh, the city is now called Edison. <laughs> so they changed the name. So from 80, 1876 till 1881, uh, he had a group of people working on creating inventions. So this is much similar. This is very similar to, for example, software companies today. That bunch of people put them in the room, let's make good software. And the same thing was this. Now, they created uh, a lot of inventions from these labs. So, so the one way is that innovation happens uh, like this. But many times they happen when you have stuff to work on. And so how does it really happen? And, and this is so the, the purpose of the lecture is to go through this. But at first, I want to um, play a clip from a movie. This is the movie Apollo 13. You've seen that? Where they go up to space and something happens. Houston, we have a problem. Now, they needed to make this kind of object in the 
in the Apollo space shuttle that they were in, or space thing, whatever. Uh, and they didn't have it. They needed to make it from some parts. So innovation happens when you take parts, you build something. Let's see this clip. So innovation happens many times when you have things and you need to build something. You take what you have at the current moment and you build from it. We take the ideas that we inherit, stumbled upon, we jigger them together into some new shape. So this is a, an example of how you innovate. Um, before we go to break, uh, I want to share one story. So this is the Neo Nurture car part incubator. Um, Sometimes in 1870s, uh, this guy went to the zoo, Parisian doctor who worked at a hospital. He went to the zoo and he saw these chicken being hatched with this incubator in this incubator box. So he thought, whoa, here's a good idea. You know, they had baby death. You know, the, 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 the young babies, the, many of them didn't survive the first days because they just died uh, and so he, t he thought you know I can put the babies into this incubator and the level of mortality uh, dropped so, so the more babies survived so we know this today I mean you have this incubator now after the 2004 tsunami some town in Indonesia they got eight high tech incubators from some charities a few years later, they were all broke. Nobody could fix them because they didn't have any parts. These were high-tech, really expensive, the state-of-the-art incubator. So this guy from, um, his name was um, Timothy Peresto of the company White Eyes Design Matter. He decided to build one out of car parts because everywhere in the world, anywhere, there's a car. And in Indonesia, they have lots of cars. And the auto companies, they have very efficient supply lines to, for parts coming into these countries. So if you have a Toyota or an SUV or something, I mean, these cars, they have 40,000 different parts. You take them and build something. So the headlights are underneath there. Everything within this is made from cars. So if they need to, if something breaks, they can go to the next garage and get the part and fix it. And they don't need a manual to do it. So it's, it's very simple. So this is a, a, a really a, a very interesting story uh, of how you can take stuff that you have, you build something from it. And this is exactly how innovation happens. And now we should take a break and continue in five.